ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to yet another episode of the GC Informer. My name is Max, and we have some pretty interesting stories to talk about, so let's get right into it. First things first, there is a new update for the super popular game, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. The update is going to be coming with a new rifle, some first-person leaderboards, but also a new foggy kind of dynamic weather system, which is really the most interesting part of this update in my opinion. You know, it may not seem like a lot, but this fog kind of really changes the way people are going to be playing the game. You know, if there's fog in place, you can't be seeing a player running across an entire town and rushing after them. You'll have to be much more careful and quiet and have to have quick reflexes to combat people that just pop up out of the fog. This also affects people who snipe. I know there's a lot of sniping that goes on in this game, so people that snipe may not be able to camp as much and just fire away from wherever they are just seeing the entire map. This time around, they're going to have to be a lot more careful with where they stay. This update for PUBG is out now. So the Nintendo SNES Classic is coming out this month, and as you know, scalpers have taken over and there's going to be a whole bunch of overpriced systems on eBay and everything like that. However, the president of Nintendo of America, our favorite Reggie, came out and said you probably shouldn't be spending any more than $80 on an SNES Classic. He also came out and said that Nintendo has learned from the NES Classic launch last year which had a whole bunch of shortages and because of that they really amped up the production this time around so you shouldn't even have to worry about that sort of stuff. I don't know how that's going to be the case, you know. Even if they come out with a second batch, there's going to be a bunch of scalpers that come out and buy them all up, pre-order them instantly. It's a really tough thing to avoid unless these systems become available everywhere, really. But that's likely never going to be the case with the way these things are produced and the way Nintendo works with this kind of stuff. So. We'll have to wait and see, and you know, Nintendo does kind of say things that they don't always mean a lot of the time, such as that the Switch is not a replacement for the Nintendo 3DS. Speaking of Nintendo, tomorrow they're going to be having a Nintendo Direct at 3pm Pacific Time that focuses exclusively on games coming to the Switch and 3DS. They also highlighted the fact that we'll be getting new details for Super Mario Odyssey. You know, it's funny that I just said the Switch is a replacement for the 3DS, and then here they just announced a Nintendo Direct saying that they're going to give us details details on both. Of course this isn't going to happen instantly, however I have a strong feeling that the Switch is kind of Nintendo's answer to having a home console and a handheld. You know, it's the perfect next step, it's a merging between both the handheld and the home console. It's, it's brilliant, really. The fact that it would be replaced in the 3DS is not a bad thing, but that's going to happen, so I'd be careful if you're still trying to jump on the 3DS train unless you just have that massive backlog that you really want to catch up on. I doubt we're going to be getting much support for it for much longer. Multiple online retailers have listed a kind of Bayonetta Vanquish double pack that's supposed to be coming to the PS4 and the Xbox One. Now Platinum Games hasn't officially commented on this, but usually when these retail listing leaks happen, they tend to be real. Not to mention that both of these games were recently just ported to PC, so chances are very high that they're also going to be coming to the next gen system. I am sad though, because while both of these games are very awesome, chances are very very low that we'll be seeing a Bayonetta 2 on anything aside from the Wii U or the Nintendo Switch if that comes later on. And this is because Nintendo are the ones that published Bayonetta 2, which is why it was only available on the Wii U. That game is amazing, and I really want to see where the story continues, but I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to play it. So Microsoft and the wonderful RPG game makers of Obsidian apparently had an Xbox One exclusive RPG in the works a while back that eventually got cancelled, kind of like Scalebound with Platinum Games. Eurogamer were the ones that actually uncovered this with their coverage of Obsidian Entertainment, and basically the game was to be called Stormlands, and here I have a quote on the game from the Obsidian co-founder and CEO. We were given a proposal, the Million Man Raid. Conceptually, what came from Microsoft was this idea. Imagine you're playing The Witcher, maybe with a friend. What happens if at points in time a giant creature pops up that you can see in the distance, and it's not just popping up while you're playing, it's popping up for everybody who's playing. You all rush this creature and there's this haze around it, and as you're all rushing through the haze, the game is matchmaking you into 40 man raids who are going to fight the creature. There are a lot more details on the game in the actual Eurogamer article which I will link in the description down below. It's really fascinating, you guys need to read about this game. And last but not least for today's news, our favorite YouTuber PewDiePie did something that got him in the headlines yet again. Basically he was streaming PUBG the other day and he uttered 
heard the n-word while playing. Now, make of that what you will. I know that Felix comes from a different place in the world where that word maybe isn't as relevant as it is in American culture. PewDiePie knows he has one of the biggest influences on YouTube and he needs to be very careful with what he says in that regard. It's part of the territory. It comes with being a huge YouTube star. It comes with being a star in any medium, really. You have the obligation to think about what you're going to say before you put it out in the world because you know you have these millions and millions of people that follow you. And in PewDiePie's case, a lot of which are kids. Regardless, despite how you feel about this kind of situation, the developers of Firewatch actually issued a DMCA on his videos that he made on their game last year because they want absolutely no association with him after this. Developer of Firewatch, Sean Vanaman, actually came out and was talking about how he thinks PewDiePie is a very negative image on the gaming industry as a whole. He says, and I quote, I am sick of this child getting more and more chances to make money off of what we make. Sean will also be reaching out to other higher ups, other game developers to try and cut off PewDiePie from the type of content he makes. So the story really isn't done yet, assuming that Sean follows up with reaching out to other people. So again, regardless of what you think about this situation, there's definitely going to be more to it, and it's something that needs to be talked about and dealt with. Anyways folks, that's about it for today's episode of the GC Informer. Thanks as always for watching, and don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below on these news stories. Don't forget to stay tuned to GameCast for all of your gaming needs.